Okay, snow cones. Today's uh, objective is that students will be analyzing linear and quadratic data to review some characteristics and vocabulary of relations and functions and apply them to problem situations. So notice two things here. We're looking at linear and we're also looking at quadratic data. Those two things. All right, so let's take a look at the scenario that we're working with today. Up here at the top, it says that Jody and Riley are opening a snow cone stand to make some extra money over the summer. To determine the costs they will charge for their large snow cones, they took a survey of 80 random people to analyze the cost versus the number of people that would buy a snow cone at that price. The data collected from the survey is compiled in the table below. So, here's the situation, guys. They want to make some extra money. So what they're going to do is sell some snow cones. They're just not sure what they should sell the snow cones for. So what they did was they went out and asked 80 people, hey, if I charge 25 cents for a snow cone, would you buy my snow cone? Here's what they found. Look at the tape. For 25 cents, how many of those 80 people said, yeah, I'll buy your snow cones? 75 people. Then they said, okay, what if I charge a little more? What if I charge 50 cents for the snow cones? How many of you would buy my snow cones? How many people said, yeah, we'll buy your snow cones? 70. They kept going with that. Notice down here, they asked, what if I charge $2 for a snow cone? How many of you would buy my snow cone? How many people said, yeah, we'll buy your snow cone? 40. So, do you notice anything about this table here? You don't notice anything about that. What's happening? And why are they decreasing by five? Yeah, notice here every time they increase the price by 25 cents, what's happening over here? You're losing people, right? Which makes sense. If you start uh, charging too much, you're probably not going to have very many customers. So let's take a look at question number one. Question one says, from the pattern in the table, do you think there is a relation between the cost of the snow cone and the number of people that would purchase the snow cone? Are they related? Does one affect the other? Yes. Absolutely. So write down yes for them. Yes, there is a relation. Then it says explain your reasoning. Well, we kind of did that already. What we just found out here was that every time we increase the price by 25 cents, What's happening is that we're losing five people. So include that point. Every time we increase the price by 25 cents, we're losing five customers. Decreasing by five. The last part of number one says to go ahead and use this pattern to extend the table. So for my X's over here, all that's happening is that we're uh, increasing the price each time by 25 cents. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with that pattern. So after $2, I should have 225 Then I should have 250 275 3 dollars 325 350, 375, and $4. All I'm doing is continuing the pattern. Matter of fact, I'm going to continue the pattern for my Y values as well. Notice on the Y values over there, it's decreasing by 5. So after 40, we should have a 35, then a 30, 5, 20, 15, 10, Five and zero. So all I did was extend the tape, extend the path. Now we got one more blank that we need to fill in. Let's slow it down right here on that last blank. I want to know what goes here. Well, it is the Y values, but how exactly did I get those Y values? Remember, says we said there was a relationship between the X and the Ys. So how did I get the y values from the x values? So in other words, how did I get this 0 here from this $4? How did I get this 5 from this 375? How did I get this 10 from this 350 here? What did I do? How did I come up with that? What's the equation? What's
what's the rule? 0.25x? Mm, nope, not quite. Let me give you a little hint, guys. I'm going to have you dig in your head here. Go back to Algebra 1. And in Algebra 1, you guys use your calculator a lot. When you're given a table, like I have here, is there somewhere in the calculator that we can put these numbers in? Ah, there it is, stats. So what I want you to do is go to stats. Stat, and then what? And edit. Now, for the sake of time here, don't worry about putting all of the order pairs in, because that's going to take quite a while. So what I want you to do instead is just go ahead and put in the first, oh, I don't know, one, two, three, four numbers. The four, first four set of x and y values. That should be good enough. We don't need all of them. We'll just stick with the first four. So those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, in L1 are the x's. And L2 are the Y's. Is it supposed to be that the was it the A is supposed to be? Yeah. What the star man? Oh wait a minute. No. There it is here. Right there. Well I know I just had that one thing. I just wish it was. Okay, so hold on. We're gonna move ahead of some of the others. After you get those numbers in. Then what are we going to do once we have those numbers? You go back to stat again. Then you're going to move over to where it says calc. And then you're going to go down to number four, which number four says line reg, linear regression. That's what I want you to do. And then you're going to hit enter, enter, and then it's going to say something. It's going to give you some numbers. Actually, it's going to give us an equation. And that equation we're getting is negative 20x plus 8. So write that down for me. Negative 20x plus 8. This is the rule. This is the equation. This is how we're getting our y values from these particular x values. Now, without wasting too much time, I just want to real quick here explain where this 20 and where this 80 is coming from. Let me start with the 80. Anybody remember us talking about an 80 somewhere? They with what, people. How many people did they serve? They surveyed 80 people. So that's where this 80 is coming from because that's how many people were served. 80. Notice there's a negative sign in front of the 20. Why a negative sign? Well, what's happening to the number of people? It's decreasing. So the reason it's a negative is because we have a decrease. However, is it decreasing by 20 here, guys? No. What is it decreasing by in the table? Decreasing by 5. So where the heck is this 20 coming from? What's that? Uh, all of them. Well, kind of. The reason there's a 20 here is because that's how much it decreases every time we increase the price. Not a quarter, but $1. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When I go from $1 to $2, notice that's a dollar increase. Every time I increase by $1, look what happens over here from the lots. Notice that it decreased from 60 to 40. How much of a decrease is that? 20. 20. When I go from $2 to $3, how much decrease is that? 20. So that minus 20 or negative 20 there simply means that I'm decreasing the number of people by 20 every time I increase the price by one dollar. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. On number two, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a scatter plot. Notice they didn't give us anything other than this graph paper. So there's a couple of things that we're going to have to add to it. The first thing we're going to do is label the x and the y axis. We want to know what is it that we're talking about. So let me start with the x axis. What exactly are those x values? What do they represent? Look at your table. It tells you right in your table, guys. It says right here is the cost of the snow cones. So that's what I'm going to put over here in my graph. The x values are the cost of the snow cones. And when I say cost, we're in the U.S. here, so we're talking money, dollars. 
What about the y values? What were those? Number of people. This is the number of people buying the snow cones. So now that I know what the x and y values are, you'll notice there's no numbers on the x or y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and label that. We just need to make sure that we can account for all the numbers in our table. So let me go back to this table real quick here. Notice the x values. The x values go from 25 cents all the way up to $4. So when I number down here on my x axis, I need to make sure that I can get all the way up to $4. We need to make sure that whatever we count by, it makes sense for our situation. So has anybody got suggestions on what I should count by here? What's that? I think here, 50 cents. cents. There you go. I didn't know if you were talking $50 or 50 cents. Oh. It makes more sense when you say 50 cents, right? That sounds good. I like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to count each line, and each one is going to represent 50 cents. But watch this, guys. Time out. If I label each and every line, that's a lot of stuff to write. It's going to get real crowded, right? So here's what I'm going to do instead. This first line should be 50 cents. But I'm not going to write that down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next one, which should be a dollar. So I'm going to put a dollar. One. The next one should be a dollar fifty. But I'm going to skip that one, and I'm going to go to the next one, which should be two dollars. The next one is two fifty, but I'm going to skip it, and I'm going to label the three dollars. So even though I'm not writing the numbers, we do understand that we are counting by. 50 cents, right? First line is 50 cents, then a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, two fifty, and so on. And the only reason I'm doing this is so that I don't have so many numbers down there and it doesn't get too crowded on. Alright, now let's go to the Y's, the Y values. If I go back to my table again, notice the table here, we went from zero all the way up to what number? Well, it says 75, but how many people were serving? 80. So let's go ahead and do that. If I want to get from 0 all the way up to 80, what do you think I should count by? 10. 10. That sounds good. Let's do it by 10s. So let's do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90. I'll even have a little room to spare. We're counting by 10s. So now I've got the graph paper all set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these ordered pairs that we have in our table and we're going to plot them on our graph paper. That way we can determine if there's any kind of a pattern. So what I want you to do now, and you're going to do this on your own, is you're going to take each and every ordered pair that we have here, and I think there's about 16 of them, you're going to take each ordered pair and you're going to put it on your graph paper form. Okay, so let me give you a couple of minutes to plot each of those points. I want to know where would the order pair 25 cents 75 people be? Where would the order pair 50 cents 70 people be? Plot each of the points. <coughs> As you're plotting these, you should be able to start to see a pattern. By the way, when you get done with all of your dots, guys, do not connect those dots. Do not connect. If you already did, don't worry about it. But do not connect the dots.
Anybody notice any kind of pattern with those dots? Decrease. Decrease. Now, for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and just show you what you should be getting. You should be getting something that looks kind of like, let me see here. Is that about right? Is that what you're getting? Something like that. All right, so this is roughly, but that, yeah, don't connect the dots. So this is roughly what we're getting here, guys. You're getting some dots that are lining up here, and they're going down, starting right about here, right about 80, and going down to the four. We'll talk more about what that is here in a minute. But that's the graph that we should be getting. All right, let's answer some questions here. Number three. For number three, they want to know what is the independent and what is the dependent variable. In other words, what are the x's representing and what are the y's representing? You've already told me. We've already wrote it down on our graph here. Independent is the x. What do we say the x is worth? The cost of the snow cones. What do we say the y values worth? The number of people. So that's your independent and your dependent. The independent is the cost of the snow cones. Those were the x's. Your dependents are the number of people. Those are the y values. But if you think about it, it makes sense. The number of people that buy these snow cones is going to depend, depend on what? The price. The price. Because if it's too expensive, are you going to buy a snow cone for 20 bucks? Probably not, right? If they were charging just 25 cents for a snow cone, you're probably more likely to buy that snow cone. So the number of people that purchase a snow cone is going to depend on the price of that snow cone. All right, next thing, number four. What is an appropriate domain and range for this problem situation? Let me start with the domain, the x values. What kind of x values do we have in our graph and in our table? Let me go back over here so you can take a look. Look at the x values. What kind of x values are we looking at here? We're looking at the x column, the first column. Positive. positive numbers. What else do you notice besides the fact that they're positive numbers? Positive numbers. Well, when we say all real numbers, that would also include negatives. And we just said it's just a positive number. What? Zero to four. Notice basically what we're looking at are numbers that fall between the zero and the four. What about the y values? What kind of y values are you looking at? 80 to zero. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to write something that shows that domain and range. So here's what we got here, guys. First of all, with the domain. You'll notice, and right now all I need to do is write my little part right here. So what we're saying here is that the domain are the x values that fall between the 0 and the 4. Because we didn't have anything that cost more than four dollars, right? We didn't charge more than four dollars per cell. So anything between zero and four. The y values, on the other hand, we said were between zero and eight. And why are we stopping at eight? Yeah, that's how many people we were surveying, right? We didn't have uh, any more than eighty people to survey. Now, you'll notice this little part that's in front of that, 0 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 8. This little part here, all that part is saying is, when we talk about 0 to 8, we only want those whole numbers. In other words, we just want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We don't want to include things like negative, uh, not negative, but 2 and a half. We don't want to include things like 3 and a half. Why don't we want to include those kind of numbers? Guys, what were the y values again? What do they represent? People. So can you have three and a half people? No. So this is why we don't want to include those type of numbers. All right. Number five says, is this increasing or is it decreasing? Decreasing. How do you know it's decreasing? What was going down? The was there a line? The points, right? The points were going down. What if I didn't give you the graph to look at? Did you tell from the table that it was decreasing? 
How can you tell from the table that we don't? Yeah, as the x's got bigger, the y values got smaller. Didn't we have that in our terms the other day? As the x's get bigger, the y get smaller. That's the definition of decrease. Uh, the next one says, is it a is it continuous or discrete? Remember, I asked you not to connect the dots. So this is discrete dots. And the reason we're not connecting the dots is because we just said it, we can't have half a person. And when you connect those dots, you would be including half a person. You can't do that. Number seven, what do you think? Would you call this a function? And why would you call this a function? Yeah, because none of the x's are repeated. And what function does it look like most? Why is it that way? And what is that? What's the name of that function? Linear. Linear. Very nice. So, yes, this is a function. And the function that best describes it is the linear function. So it's like a lot. Number eight. How can you determine the price at which no one will buy a snow cone according to table graph or algebraic? How can you determine? Well, first of all, what is that price? Four dollars. At four dollars, nobody's going to buy a snow cone. How did you know it was four dollars? Because that was at zero. If you look at the table, what did you have right next to four dollars? You had zero. I want you to write that down for me on number eight. Four dollars. That's the magic number here. Now you don't have to write the whole thing, guys. Four dollars. And how do we know it was four dollars? So we looked at the table. And that's all you have to write for. When you was four dollars and we looked at the table. What was sitting right next to four dollars in the table? Zero. Which means at four dollars, nobody's gonna be buying that stuff from. Okay, we got one more question to answer here, number nine. Number nine says, should Jody write, uh, consider using zero as the domain? No. Why not? Because zero is? doesn't start until the end of the graph. Domain is the x. And what were those x values again? What did they represent? Yeah. Cost of the snow cone. So what we're saying here is, why don't we want to say, yeah, basically what's happening is you're giving it away. Okay. So, no, they should not. And that's because they wouldn't make any money. And that's good enough. Right? You don't have to write the whole thing. What it comes down to is, if you're giving it away, you're not making any money. As a matter of fact, not only are you not making money, what's happening? You're actually losing money. You're losing money. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop right there. Thank <laughs> you.